Control point manipulation is a core capability in both Katia ISIM and Freestyle. Being proficient with control points and diffusion laws is imperative if you want to do Class A surface design and make the big bucks. But even if you don't aspire to be a surface modeler, having a decent understanding in how they work will benefit anyone in product design. So let's get right into it. Control points are an explicit function for sculpting and only work with explicit datum geometry, such as Bezier curves and surfaces. For example, if you have a blend surface feature and try to manipulate its control points, Katia will give you a warning that an isolated surface will be duplicated from the feature before allowing access, so be aware and plan out your working methods. In both Katia Isom Shape Design and Katia Isom Shape Morphing applications, control points are located inside the Modification tab. In Freestyle, you will find them under the Addition tab. Control points are initiated by either clicking on the control point icon or by a double click either in the tree or graphically on a datum surface or face. So here you can see our control point mesh in green. Out of the box, it's difficult to differentiate between the mesh and control vertices, or CVs, so I like to change the graphics. And we can do this in our preferences. So once inside, navigate to the app preferences, then styling, and either go to freestyle or isom. From there, I like to change the mesh properties of my surfaces in both U and V directions. Here I'm choosing a light blue, then copying the values and pasting into the next field. I already assigned red to the face meshes, and now I want to assign yellow to the CVs and change them to a larger circle. I also recommend turning on the App Options panel. Access is through a right mouse button in space and choosing App Options. This panel can be docked to the top or side, or as I prefer, minimized. And you can also turn on the object properties the same way and then dock it as a tab in the header section. So inside the App Options panel, under Display, turn on the Orders and Continuity flags. This will display a graphic numerical indicator of surface orders and will show its usefulness in a moment. The continuity option offers the ability to lock out rows of control points in U, V, or both directions. This is useful if you want to preserve anything from G0 to G3 boundary conditions coming off another surface. Now when accessing our control points, notice how they really pop out, and you can also see the UV and continuity flags. The contextual menu is accessed by holding down the right mouse button and choosing the desired order. Clicking on these flags will do an incremental increase, and holding Shift while clicking will decrease the orders. In this example, I have a simple planar patch where the orders are set pretty high to 11 in both U and V directions. The reason is to provide a better visual of diffusion laws in action. And if you ever find yourself confused on how they work, do the same. Just follow along and you will learn. But before getting into the guts of control points, Let's quickly change the color of this surface through the object properties, which are on the right tab of the App Options panel. I want a darker brown to make it easier to see. Okay, in our dialog box at the top is our support row. This is the translation direction of any control point manipulation. Going from left to right, the first direction is based normal to the robot plane. This means that the vector normal to the robot plane is the direction of the control point translation. And each time F5 is clicked, the plane will rotate normal to X, Y, and Z directions. So you can see as I hit F5, the directional arrow on my control points changes to reflect the robot orientation. So now I have it set to the Z vector, and as I tug on the outside row of control points, they translate in this direction. The second direction is along the mesh lines. The third direction is normal to the surface. The fourth is along the XY of the robot plane. 
The fifth direction is along the local tangent of the surface, so the CVs chosen are going to move tangentially from their projected position normal to the surface. And the last option is normal to screen plane. Be careful with this one because it's measured to the current view. And also make sure that the view is set to orthographic, otherwise you will not be happy. Moving on to the filter row, we start with CV points only, which locks out the mesh lines. This is handy for selecting individual or grouped control points. So here we can grab multiple points by making a first selection, then hold the shift key down and a second selection. All the CVs in between are captured and ready to be moved. The next option is mesh lines only. This locks out the CVs and is a good way to ensure that no unintentional individual points are moved. And the last filter is points and mesh where all points and meshes are selectable. So these are all convenient options depending on the task at hand. The icons to the right are for selection. The first will activate all control points and the second will deselect them. Okay, now let's take a look at the diffusion laws. For now, we're only concentrating on the diffuse section. The right side law for cross diffusion will be covered in a moment. Now this video only talks about surface control points. So if you find yourself working with curved control points, there will only be one set of diffusion laws. So as I go through these first examples, they are also applicable to curves because we're only dealing with one row at a time. So if you think about rows of control points in U and V direction inside a surface, imagine them as profiles and guides that the surface uses as inputs. These are the structural DNA of the surface. Sometimes I might refer to the surface mesh as toothpick geometry. I wish I made that term up, but uh, I heard it from someone else a long time ago and it stuck with me. All right, so the first law is constant. This will lock all the CVs in the active mesh row and translate them all together the same distance. The second law is linear. This will form a linear diffusion, just like you see in the icon. So in this case, since I started with a straight row, the diffusion keeps it that way. And as I click the icon, it sequentially goes through to the next law, which is concave. So as I move the outside CV, you can see a concave diffusion pattern develop. Next is convex. I'm going to reset the surface choosing the other side. And the last law is the bell curve. So you can see the inflection on the diffusion as I pull the outside point up. Now that I have the law formed, I can adjust the ratio by adjusting the slider on my screen and make some decisions. So now I am choosing the concave law and doing the same thing, but look at how the ratio can turn concave to convex. The law default values are pre-assigned and you can tweak them to modify the shapes. The CV or mesh directly modified is the reference point for a law. To illustrate my point, if I choose a spot in the middle of a mesh, the points are diffused from either side until they reach the edge. So you can see as the law type is changed, the diffusion ratio from the reference point is dispersed accordingly. And once again from the edge, you can see how it behaves. So far, we covered how diffusion and law ratios work on a row of control points, which is the same principle as working on a curve. Now let's examine how to apply a diffusion in the cross direction. Cross direction simply implies that a second diffusion law will be applied to the surface dimension that is not being directly manipulated. So in this example, I select the mesh of the V row and apply a constant diffusion law. This means that all the control points along that row will move in a constant direction. Here, the U rows are designated as the cross direction and will form a shape based on its corresponding law, which I set to concave. The laws have no pre-assigned designation to U or V. They are purely based on the chosen mesh. So again, if I pick the U direction mesh, the constant law is applied. But if I go back and select the V direction mesh, the constant law is applied here 
and the cross diffusion is applied to the U direction. Now as a modeler, I found myself intuitively grabbing a corner CV of the mesh to apply diffusions in both directions, but quickly realized that only one law was being applied. If you think about it, this makes perfect sense because if no mesh is selected, then how can two diffusion laws be assigned? In this case, where a CV is selected, Katia applies the same diffusion law in both directions. So here you can see that I was dealt a linear diffusion in both directions, even though I have the concave law chosen for the cross diffusion. Okay, let's try this again. This time selecting the mesh, which will receive the concave law, and by default, the cross law, which is set to linear, goes to the V rows. And as I spin it around, you can see how they're applied. Now let's select the other mesh direction, leaving the law settings. You may have correctly guessed by now that the diffusions are swapped. By clicking on the right icon, we can cycle through the various laws and watch them reapply on the surface. So here we are changing the main diffusion law and we can do the same with the cross diffusion. This behavior is the default setting where the law is validated only after selecting OK and exiting the command. My personal preference is to change this behavior to have the law validated while still in the command. You'll see what that means in a moment, but first we need to go to the Preferences panel to change the settings. Now navigate to the App Options tab, then select either Freestyle or Isom Shape Design. Then open up the General tab and scroll to the bottom. There's an option called Delay Law Application. Turn this on. This option allows multiple control point operations while in the command, including changing the law type. Let's see how this works as I apply the laws to this surface. Now at this point, under the default options, if I change the law type, the diffusion will immediately change the surface. But the way I like to work is to have the initial diffusion accepted. Then I can further refine the control points, either with the same law or by applying a different law. So here I just changed the law, but the surface did not change. The benefit is that you can stay in the command and really refine the surface with better control. I can continue manipulating the surface, then click OK to accept. You may find that the default setting is better for you. In any case, everyone is happy. Next is the attenuation control. You may know this as mouse warp. You will find this in the app options control panel. These settings define a ratio between the mouse displacement and the actual displacement of the CV manipulator handle in the geometry. Moving from left to right, the default is zero attenuation, then low, medium, and high. These options are nice to have, including those situations where you may want to tune a surface down to a single micron. The next options are for snapping a control point. The first is snap on vertex, then snap on edge, snap on control point, snap on segment, and finally handle snap. And by default, we are in dynamic mode, which is the one-to-one -one behavior from mouse to control point movement. But we have an option to use step mode, which incrementally moves the control points by the user specified distance. This is really useful if you want to limit the movement to a discrete amount. You can also turn on the delta distance, which shows the running distance of the control point translation. So in this case, I have a 10 millimeter distance set. If I select and hold the CV handle, it will move in 10 millimeter increments, displaying that running value as I pull it up. Once I release the handle, the default value resets to zero and will restart the count from this point. You can also display the actual surface deviation and it's important to understand the difference between a delta distance move of a control point and surface deviation. If you translate an outside corner point, this is the only case where the surface actually deviates by the same amount. A control point is like a magnet that attracts the surface, so as you move the magnet around, the surface will deform, reflecting that distortion. The surface deviation control is found in the control point dialog box. 
It's useful in situations where the deviation needs to be controlled, but I do not recommend leaving this setting on because it greatly slows down the performance. All right, now let's talk about smoothing control points. The first option is harmonization. There is a pull down with various options. The first is blend. This will reposition the inside control points relative to the surface's four boundaries. So here I initially tortured my surface to show how it works. It's straightforward. Just select the harmonize icon and watch all the inside control points shift in position by referencing the U and V boundary locations. The next options are mean plane and three point plane. These will basically shift a selected control row into a plane based on the current position of the control points, finding the closest planar result. Screen plane is very useful. This will straighten out a row based on its two outer points relative to the screen view. I'm quickly going through the U and V rows while staying in this view, but keep in mind that it's only straight in that view, not necessarily in the row itself, and it's obvious that they are not aligned as I rotate around. The next one is very interesting, but not well known. This takes advantage of the robot to align the points. To take advantage of this option, you must access the robot manipulation tools. The quickest way to do this is through the action pad. The shortcut is the B key. In CATIA V5, the F6 key should pull the toolbar in. With the action pad, you will want to pin it to your screen for this operation, then scroll down to the bottom. So now I'm going to select the set position icon, which allows me to orientate the robot by one, two, or three clicks. Single click will position the robot to that point in its current orientation. Two clicks will define the Z vector of the robot and three points will define the compass plane. And it's important to click on the perch icon to actually move the compass to position. And once this is done, activate the row and click on the right icon under the projection field. This will align the control points in the robot plane. There are a lot of different ways to leverage this capability, so have fun and try different combinations for yourself. Next is smoothing. This will smooth only the active control points according to a smoothing factor that can be set in the slider bar. Harmonize Blend will not touch the outer control points, but will affect all the inside points. Last topic is Symmetry Plane. This is really powerful. Symmetry will balance selected control points about a user-specified plane. Here we are showing an unbalanced curve and its relative position to the plane. CATIA will only balance the points that you specify. In this case, I want all of them. So I make the selection and click on the plane and they snap into position. Now I can manipulate one side and get the equal result on the opposite side for free. Here I am creating a flange from the curve and turning it to a datum so I can apply a symmetry to the surface control points. You can select the CV or mesh and let Katia worry about the other side. This could be a great way to reverse engineer a wheel lip area for a car or anything that is balanced relative to a plane. And that's a wrap for our control point lesson. Please make sure to share this with your colleagues and they'll be sure to thank you. And with that, have a great day.